So I just picked up this Asus M.2 enclosure, and this will do both SATA M.2 and NVMe M.2s. I don't really use the M.2s, the SATA portion that is, very much anymore, but I do have a couple of them laying around still, so they could potentially still be used. However, I just thought this was kind of cool. It's not really a new release, but I just thought it looked pretty cool. It's got a water, good water resistant IP68 rated. So I just figured we check this thing out together and see if it performs as it should. This is only 10 gigabits per second, but hey, it's rugged, it's nice, and I like it. So let's check it out. All right, so we got everything out of the box here and basically we get a user's manual. We get a quick start guide that you can reference if you are having any kind of difficulty or refer to the user's manual and some other piece of paper that just says in search of the credible or in search of the incredible, I should say. All right, so we do get the unit here. We get a cable. This is a 10 gigabits per second. And I forget if I mentioned that, but this is only 10 gigabits per second unit. It is not nearly the fastest one. It's just a gen or it's a USB 3.2 Gen 2. That's the best this is going to do. Uh, basically a thousand megabytes a second. And we do get an Allen key. I don't believe I stated that either. So this is not toolless, which means we do have to take off a few screws on the cover, get the cover off. Um, I would assume their reasoning is to have it sealed shut for that IP68 rated, but I do have another one that's IP68 or maybe 67, I'm not sure, rated that has a quick latch on it. So not too sure how they're thinking about that. This thing is heavy though, I'll tell you that. Um, so let's get this undone. On the inside, it does have a quick latch. Uh, from what I read. And so installing the M.2 is going to be pretty simple, no screws. All right, so here is the unit. And it looks like it's gonna be an LED right there. We got the tough gaming emblem right there. Uh, probably a serial number right there, if you can read that. And here's the back. So we have four screws and some information on the back there. If you, I know the lighting's kind of bad at the back of my camera. So there it is. I do have a couple of selections here. I have an NVMe. This is an Evo or a Samsung two terabyte Evo Plus. It's a 970. This is probably even, wait, well, it is, I know it is. It's way too fast even for this. I don't even need something that fast. And we have an M.2 SATA. So we're gonna test them both out, make sure they both work. I guess I need the Allen key first. I'll tell you what, I would rather it be toolless because doing this, it's not really a quick change. You can't change these, these drives out fast. All right, so that gasket actually pulled right off with it. That's not cool. So we got to put that back in its in its grooves here. Yeah, I'm so far not liking that too much. All right, that's back in. And we can see we have our quick latch right here. And we're going to be utilizing that. We'll go ahead and test out the SATA one first. And then I just got to figure out how this latches here. Okay, I'm not really liking that either. I'd rather a screw, to be quite honest. All right, now I think I got it in the position it's supposed to be in. So I think that's the position you need it in. Let's try it again. And then It's still not going low enough, I don't think. Oh, okay. So I just saw that this quick latch is actually capable of just pulling out and removing. So the problem was, is it wasn't seated back far enough into these slots. You see how one's bigger? So this wasn't pushed back all the way, which I don't really care for that, to be honest. I'd rather it be a screw because I know it's quick so you can put it in different positions, but I don't know, maybe I'm just being fussy. So let's put this back in 
and no, it's still not going back all the way. Oh, there it goes. I had to pull back on it with my nail. So I had to grab a hold of this and pull back on it. And now, there we go. Now you can see that it slid over the top of that. Okay, now we're installed. So let's, you know what? I'm not even gonna put the cover back on because that's too much of a pain in the butt. This, I don't believe, has any peel on it, which it does not. So in my last video, you'll find that I, I peeled something up I wasn't supposed to. Anyway, I know it's got a heat sink on it. I'm not worried about it with this particular one. It's not gonna get hot enough for our testing. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. We are gonna take the provided cable here and get it plugged in and test it. So we're just gonna plug it right into the front. It doesn't matter which end, they're both type C connectors. We're just gonna get it plugged in just like that. And let's get over to the computer. All right, I'm just gonna take this and plug it directly into my Dark Dragon build. And we can see an LED here on the front. I don't know if this drive is initialized or not. Okay, it is. We have nothing in it. Now we're gonna open up Crystal Disk Mark. I'm not even gonna bother starting OBS just to show you this little bit. We're just gonna go ahead and start it right there. I can get zoomed in or out of the way. You should be able to see that, no problem. And we should see something about 10 or a thousand, whoa. Oh no, no, this is the, I forgot, this is the SATA drive. So we are maxing the SATA drive out right now. It's saturating it. And that's perfectly normal right there. I was thinking if we had this drive in it. The other side should read approximately the same. So now we're just ready, ready to read the writes and we're relatively close. Yep, now we're getting even closer. So that is performing as it should for a SATA drive in it. And as soon as this stops, I'm gonna swap these and then we'll test out the, the faster drive and make sure we can saturate the enclosure. Cause this will do up around 3,000, 3,500 in a computer. But this unit can only do about a thousand megabytes a second. Okay, so our test is done. We're just gonna unplug it. I am going to remove this by spinning that again. And we should be able to pull up on that. Get this out. We're gonna put the new one in. And learning from my last one, see it won't sit down all the way. So I got to put my thumb and push that direction while putting a little, just a little down pressure on the actual NVMe. And you heard that click. I'm not a fan of that. That I would rather deal with a screw than have to deal with that every time. That's just my opinion. But I mean, I guess the installation is pretty fast once you get used to that. But I don't like that. We will throw this plate back on. Actually, I gotta make my, make sure my gasket is in correctly. And we are going to put, we'll just put two screws in it. One in opposite corners, just to give a little down pressure. This one will get a little hotter, but for this test, it's not gonna get hot enough to where it's gonna slow it down. So I'm just doing this for more aesthetics and see how warm it actually gets. Maybe we'll do a couple tests on it. Yep, we want the D drive and we're just gonna go with the top positions again. We can see that the light does blink as it's being uh, written to and read from. This one should see about a thousand megabytes a second. All right, so we got that. And the writes coming up here in a minute should see about the same as the reads. Maybe, maybe slightly lower. Any second we should get that number. There it is. 1,023. It might go slightly higher. Okay, 24. But it's performing exactly how it should. 
and how it's advertised. All right, so as we saw, and as I'm gonna state again, it performed just as I expected. The only negative things about this is you do have to remove the screws on the back to access it. And the second being is that, that quick connect. I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it fast so you can move it to any position because this can support the 2242, 22, was it 2260 and 2280? Something like that. So it can support three different sizes. Um, I just don't like how you have to like hold it back and push down. I, that's a little ridiculous. I'd almost rather deal with a screw on the inside. If you're going to make it screws on the outside, just put a screw on the inside. Otherwise, make the whole thing toolless. Either go toolless or don't go toolless. I'm just saying. So it wasn't that big of a deal because, you know, I can figure things out. It's just, it's kind of finicky. Like if you're not used to that kind of stuff, you know, you may question it a lot more. Anyway, yeah, it, it, it did great. I think it's very rugged. It's got, it's, it's like an aluminum, aluminum housing. The whole thing is very, very heavy to the feel. It, you know, this has got a drop resistant on it. I don't know of what height or anything, but it, it will, it has some sort of a shock absorber uh, built into it or a, a shock resistant, not a shock absorber, a shock resistant built into it. Uh, the only other thing I can say about it is I did not have to initialize these drives. If you buy this and you buy a brand new NVMe or SATA M.2, then you have to initialize it. And I have other videos sh demonstrating on and showing you how to initialize drives. So if you have to do that, you can go ahead and search my channel on how to do that, or there's plenty of other channels that I think show and demonstrate how to do that. But I have shown that quite a few times. Other than that, yeah, great little unit. One other thing I wanna point out is, since I have a lot of these, and maybe you do too, maybe you just like them, is it's tough to remember what cable goes to what in your house. <laughs> You have USB-C, USB-A, then you have the micro USB. So they all change quite a bit. But if you just grab any USB cable, you plug it in, you may not get the supported speeds from this. I'm just saying. So sometimes it's good to keep the cable just plugged in and keep it with the unit or somehow label the cable. And, you know, that way you'll know what cable goes to what. It's just kind of a little tip. All right, guys, if you're looking to get one of these or maybe just check it out, I will leave a link in the description down below. These do make a great gift, whether it's the holidays or not, for your PC person in your life. Uh, I really like it. I like, you know, they're just the more the merrier. You have more options. I have a ton of these, a ton of these, and I do use them quite frequently. So anyway, Go ahead, check that out if you want. Other than that, feel free to leave the comments down below and give this thing a thumbs up just to support the channel. And also, if you have not subscribed, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon next to the subscription button to get notified for any future videos that I do post. And uh, that's it, guys. Until next time, take care.